Here comes the sun, here comes the sun, here comes the sun. And it stopped. There's a basic concept in physics called frame of reference. I have two cameras set up here representing two different frames of reference. This is camera A frame of reference. The other one is camera B frame of reference. I'm going to play this again using camera B frame of reference. Here comes the sun, here comes the sun, here comes the sun. And it stopped. There's a basic concept in physics called frame of reference. I have two cameras set up here representing two different frames of reference. This is camera A frame of reference. The other one is camera B frame of reference. Camera A frame of reference, the sun was moving and the quote unquote earth was stationary. Camera B frame of reference, the sun was stationary. But the quote-unquote Earth, as modeled through the green paper and the toy wagon, that is the one that was moving. So the frame of reference makes all the difference. To one frame of reference, it's the exact opposite as the other frame of reference. In Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, Joshua said, it was Joshua who said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon. And the anonymous author of Joshua, the narrator, confirmed that it did in the next verse. Now, of course, they're, they're speaking from the earth frame of reference. They're not speaking from the frame of reference of Jupiter, okay? <laughs> they're speaking from the earth frame of reference. This morning I got up early. I saw the sunrise. It was a beautiful sunrise. Yes, I said sunrise. Because I'm speaking from my frame of reference. I know that the earth is spinning and the sun is really not rising. But to my frame of reference, it is. But with regards to Joshua and the sun stopping, I'm sure there's going to be some nimnu in the comment section going, but God didn't say the earth will stop spinning. He said the sun will stop moving. It was the anonymous author of Joshua who said that Joshua said it, okay? He didn't say God said it. Joshua said it. Even if God said it to Joshua or to anybody on earth, he wouldn't be speaking from the frame of reference of freaking Venus, okay? He'd be, he'd be speaking from the frame of reference of us little earthlings. Meets us where we are in our own frame of reference. Meets us where we are speaking to us in our own language. Even if God would say to Joshua, I'm going to stop the earth spinning, how would Joshua know that? By the sun, okay? It all goes back to the sun. Joshua wouldn't know about the earth stopping spinning unless the sun stopped, okay? Then some other Nimnu would say, oh, but if the earth stopped spinning, everything would fly off of it. Don't you think if God had the power to stop the earth spinning, that he would also have the power to defy the laws of inertia? Powerful key to interpret scripture correctly? Find out the cultural context. Makes all the difference. In the days of Joshua, what did the sun mean to them? What did the moon mean to them? They didn't have clocks on the wall to tell time. They didn't have computers with the time on it or cell phones to tell you what time it was or even watches back then. How did they tell time? The sun. And at night, the moon. Even in Genesis chapter 1, it says that the lights, meaning the sun and the moon, were for seasons. Mo'ed in the Hebrew, which can mean time. That's how they told time. So it very well could be that when it says the sun stood still, it's a figure of speech, meaning that, you know, time froze for us. You know, people talk like that today. Well, time froze. That, that second was like, it was like eternity. Those two seconds went by. It was like eternity to me. So it very well could be just a figure of speech. And for those of you who have a hard time with figures of speech, where I am right now, it was very, very dry, okay? And just about an hour ago, it rained cats and dogs. Now, if I were to write that down, it rained cats and dogs on such and such a date. 3,200 years from now, someone can find that and go, 
Oh, look what God did for Christopher Enoch. God rained cats and dogs out of the sky. Of course not. That's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's a figure of speech. It has nothing to do with what it literally means. So it could just mean that God pulled them out of the time frame of reference into God's frame of reference that was outside of time. And, and they, they did what they had to do to win the war. Then God put them back into the frame of reference of time. So I think it is more plausible that it is just a figure of speech, meaning time stopped for them. Not that the earth stopped spinning or that the sun stopped in the sky. But even if it were literal, then yes, the sun stopped, but only from the earth's frame of reference.